Hey, hey, guess what game can legally drink now? One year ago. Super Smash Brothers! Holy balls, where did all the years go by? I mean, just think for a minute. We started with this little Nintendo crossover fighting game. 12 characters, a little arcade mode, and a couple of other modes. And now look at it, it's a freaking beast with over 80 characters. It went from one tiny unauthorized crossover idea to... Ah... Uh, it's beautiful. So let's take a look back into this legal drinking aged adult. Created by Masahiro Sakurai, Dragon King the fighting game was a 2D, one of a kind platform fighter. It was also boring as shit. So he went and slapped on some Nintendo characters, illegally I might add, and then presented it to the higher ups who were like, hey yo, this is some good stuff. Now make it a game. Huh, well I guess using Nintendo IPs without their permission is actually a good idea. And that's how it all began. I remember hearing about the game as a kid and I could not wrap my brain around it. You mean there's a Smash before Smash Bros. Melee? Yes. My brother would always tell me he... rented it from Blockbusters. Ah, whatever that means. And then I think in 2012 we got Smash 64 on the Wii Virtual Console. And for as bare bones as this game was, it still blew my mind. Seeing the origin of Smash Bros. was really something else. Just think, all of this came from this. And then my video game hoarding addiction caught up with me and I bought it on eBay. And that's the story on why my family never let me manage their hedge fund again. So how does this mature boy play? Like shit. Whew man, this game has its fans, you know, like big players like Isaiah, but I just can't get with it. It really does have a primitive feeling to it. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic start, and honestly, we wouldn't be here today without this. But just just look at this. And then look at this. There is no competition. We got all the staples of Smash, like forward aerials, uh, side smashes, and uh, no side Bs. I'm not gonna lie, that is the biggest deal breaker with this game. It just feels wrong. <laughs> The game also feels insanely floating, like there is just tons of hits done. On the one hand it feels awful for a little baby gamer like me, but on the other hand, you know, you can do some really insane combos, like these guys. I love that he starts it with down B. There we go! Oh my god! The more you play the game, the more it grows on you, honestly. It feels like you're playing some legendary artifact from when Nintendo was just a small indie company with a 90% market share. So let's take a look at what this game has to offer. I freaking love this. And this. And this. And this. Even 20 odd years ago, Sakura had a keen eye for attention to detail. Each character actually has their own animation that plays when you select them. Mario hits the strongman pose. Fox- Hey! That's the pose he does! Luigi does, uh, he does a thing. And seriously, as silly as some of these are, they add tons of flavor to each character. Now busting into the single player, there's classic mode. You know, it's funny. Even though this is the oldest game, this classic mode somehow manages to not be the worst. Again, I need to reiterate how much is stuck since the first game. A linear path where you go from fight to fight, play a minigame or two, and then conclude with Master Hand. All of that has stayed through all the way to Ultimate. Of course, there's been some changes and additions, but for the most part, it's all there. And now, a moment of silence for Break the Targets. You are too young, man! Why? What are the other goodies in this game? Well, there's not much. There's four characters to unlock. Jigglypuff, Luigi, Captain Falcon, and Ness. Damn it! After you've broken every target and boarded every platform, you unlock the sound test. Neat. Moving on. For some reason, the item switch is locked behind playing a hundred versus matches? I guess it was intended to be a party game, but it still seems really weird to lock that off behind playing so many games. Oh, and Mushroom Kingdom's unlockable. That's about it. Neat. That's where Smash came from. Now where's it gonna go? It's transformed into not only one of the biggest gaming franchises, but also one of the biggest celebrations of gaming. With a humble roster of 12 Nintendo staples, it grew into 25, and then in Brawl, Sakurai blessed us with third-party reps, with Snake and Sonic. Six years later, the internet would collectively lose it as Mega Man was announced, and then Pac-Man. Smash 4 was really when Smash Brothers became a celebration of gaming icons. 
Now in Smash Ultimate, the Captain N trio is able to reunite, as well as introducing a whole ton of third parties through the use of DLC. Good gravy. It's raining DLC. Yeah, over the course of about two decades, we went from this to 88 freaking characters. Now, I know what you Tobal 2 fans are thinking. You know, ha, 88 characters, that's pathetic. But you gotta remember, these characters are from all walks of gaming. From icons to underrated to marketing stunts. So much of gaming's greatest hits are here now. Well, I think I've gushed on about Smash for long enough. So, Smash 64. Do I recommend it? Hell yeah.